Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I was on Facebook, uh, maybe this week I think, and uh, I ran across a post from somebody who was looking to buy gear on a budget, and their budget was $400 for an entire backpacking setup. Now that is definitely not impossible, but it uh, it's reaching a little bit if you're really looking to get quality gear. So I thought, you know, I should do a video on ways to buy budget gear. So let's get started. So there are a ton of reasons why you might want to buy on a budget. You know, you, you might just be a young person, you're fresh out of college or in college, and you don't have a lot of money, but you want to go backpacking. Maybe you're, you know, a teenager and your parents only gave you so much money to spend. You know, maybe you've got kids in college. Maybe, uh, maybe you're retired and on a fixed income. It, there are all kinds, or maybe you're just not Bill Gates. I mean, there are a ton of reasons why you'd want to find cheap gear and uh, buy things on a budget. So, whatever reason you have, I hope I can uh, provide you with a little bit of information and uh, maybe just help you out a little. All right. First off, you know if you watch my videos that I love to shop at the REI Garage Sales. Um, you get great deals on used gear and almost all of it is super high quality. So let me give you a few examples. I got them laid out right here. This is a GSI Halulite Minimalist. Now this retails for $27.95. It was at the garage sale for $12.83. Here's an even better one. A Sea to Summit Ultralight Insulated Sleep Pad. This thing retails for $149.95. I picked it up from the garage sale for $49.83. Now here's one that was just crazy. The Big Agnes Fly Creek UL1. This retailed at the time for $319.95. I paid $129.83. One last one. A Gregory Baltoro 75. Perfect condition. Had a little bit of dirt on it and that is it. This retails for $319 and I picked it up for $135.83. So there you go. That's why I love the garage sales so much. But that's not the only place you can pick things up at. Um, basically, all these other retailers, they kind of follow REI and, the, and whatever REI and whatever kind of sale that REI has going at the time, that's what all these other retailers follow. So, if at any time REI is running a sale, look at these other retailers. They may have something uh, on sale as well. Facebook groups. I belong to a few of them. Uh, a couple of them that I can name is uh, Backpacking Gear Flea Market, um, Gear Rat Outdoors. They're great resources for cheap used and new gear. Walmart for any kind of synthetic clothes, uh, shirts, t-shirts, uh, underwear, socks, things like that. Also, Walmart has a pretty big uh, backpacking slash camping section in their sporting goods and uh, some of the gear is not too bad. You just have to be careful what you're gonna what you're buying from Walmart. Um, eBay is a great place. Uh, Amazon, awesome. And then, uh, let's see, uh, Sam's Club, did I say Sam's Club? Costco, there's another one. Also, check outlet stores. If you can ever, if you ever run across like one of those big outlet malls, um, I bought my down Columbia jacket straight from the Columbia store at the outlet. And it was like, it was like 50 bucks and it's ultra light, it folds into a pocket and it's super warm and it's like, uh, I think it was an 800 fill. All right, so I'm going to start off with backpacks, and then I'll run through uh, shelters, sleep systems, a cook kit, uh, like water filtration, toilet kit, headlamps, uh, first aid kit. Uh, we'll, we'll hit rain gear. Um, but as I go through, I'll I'll hit on a couple of reasons why you might not want to purchase something that's super cheap, as opposed to, you know, just trying to find something used that's a better quality. Because there's quite a bit of lesser quality gear out there that just does not have what it takes to stand up to the rigors of backpacking. So I'll start off with backpacks. I had this lake and trail that I purchased from Meyer a couple of years ago. They were like 35 bucks a piece and they're only 35 liter um, packs. 
but these are definitely not the greatest packs and you probably aren't going to want to carry a ton of weight in them. It will get the job done if this is the only thing you can get and for 35 bucks, I mean, when you're done with it, you know, I mean, give it away to somebody who's just starting out, I guess. But you already saw the Baltoro 75, the Gregory. Um, this is a great pack, and for the price that I paid, it was like 135 bucks I paid for it. If you know backpacks and you know Gregory, you already understand that this is a great pack. The problem is, it weighs like six pounds or something like that. It's heavy. But for the price, I would, I would take this any day over that lake and trail. I know it's $100 more, but it's worth it. It is well worth it. If you are on a budget, putting your money into a decent pack, well worth it. The next option I have is this Exos 38. Now this, I actually did one of the 20% off sales. I bought this at Moose Jaw, and uh, it ended up being, I think, and, right around $135 with the 20% off. And uh, this is an, just an awesome pack. It is only a 38 liter, so you're not gonna be stuffing, you know, a zero degree bag in the bottom of this and an MSR Whisper Light stove. I mean, you're not gonna carry 50 pounds in this bag. But for a nice quick summer uh, weekend trip, no problem. Overnights, no problem. I also own an Osprey Exos 58, and I really love that. And I would recommend the 58, except that going from the 38 to the 58 is a $60 difference. So, on a budget, I think if you can get everything into that 38, that is definitely the better choice. Even though the 58 is a more versatile pack. Alright, next up is shelters. Now this is a tough one because I, th I personally think that your best bet is to buy something used. Buy something good, quality, just like the backpack. I think you want to buy something good, quality, and if that means buying used, then buy it used. As long as it's well taken care of, you know, a little dirt's not going to hurt anything. I definitely think that the used is the way to go unless you can find something that is like deeply cut on sale, maybe like a discontinued um, model or something like that. that. That's always a good way to go too. But uh, in the end, what I would go with is um, for myself, the Fly Creek UL1. Um, Obviously, um, it's not easy to find one of these for $135 like I did, but it, uh, it is possible. There's no doubt it's possible because I did it, so somebody else can do it too. There are other tents out there as well that uh, are pretty budget friendly and uh, the REI Garage actually has that, their outlet center, and there are other outlet centers too. I believe Backcountry also has an outlet uh, store too where you can buy cheaper things like the discontinued models and stuff like that. Um, so I, I think you can buy a really, really good tent for um, right around 100 to $150. You know, that is one of the major pieces of gear and I just think it's something that if you buy quality right off the bat, you won't regret it. Next, let's get into sleep systems. So I'll start out with the pads. You can pick up these cheap little roll-up blue pads from Walmart, 10 bucks. Get a halfway decent night's sleep on it. It'll at least keep you warm. Next up, the uh, Thermarest Z-Lite. I love this thing. It is a little more expensive. Probably, I've seen them for $30 for the full length one, um, but mo most of the time it runs about $40. Um, they are a great pad. They are very, they're well worth it. They insulate very well and they're quite a bit more comfortable than just that blue roll up pad. And the last thing is obviously what I went over uh, earlier the sleep pad, the ultralight insulated. You definitely would not be disappointed with it and for 50 bucks. So the second part of your sleep system is going to be a sleeping bag or your insulation. And uh, I have two examples here. One of them is a Marmot Trestles 30. This is actually a uh, synthetic insulation bag. Good down to 30 degrees, obviously. And uh, I bought this at the REI garage sale for $39.83, so basically 40 bucks. And there was 
there is absolutely nothing wrong with it and it does sleep great the only problem at all is that it is a little bit heavy because it is a synthetic bag the other option I have for you is this down quilt that I actually made myself I bought these two uh, 700 fill power down quilts from Sam's Club and I cut a portion off of one and I sewed it to the bottom of another one and then I cut out a circle to sew in a foot box with a little bit of a reinforcement and at the top I put myself a snap and I ran a, uh, a little cord in there so you can snug it down over the top of you. This, I think, is probably the best option, but you also have to have a few little DIY skills to make something like this. But this, I've only got like 30 bucks into it, so uh, you can't hardly go wrong for a 700 fill power um, uh, quilt like this. Now the third part of your sleep system is going to be a pillow and that's not to me very important because what I prefer to use for a pillow is I just take my extra clothes so what I usually do is I'll put those in a stuff sack and I actually use that as my pillow. Um, if you're totally against that and you want a pillow this is another thing I picked up when, my, when I went with my kids. Um, I, it's a field and stream pillow uh, it comes in this stuff sack here. It's not huge or anything, but uh, it's also not really tiny. But when it's actually a good size pillow, <laughs> so that's pretty comfortable. I uh, I've actually used it, so um, that's that's pretty cool. Um, another option that I have, and this is what I normally bring if I'm actually going to bring a pillow, and this is uh, something that my brother actually made me, another DIY item, um, and I don't know what it cost, but I, I'm sure it wasn't a whole heck of a lot because there's not much to it really. It's just a couple of small pieces of fabric with some uh, um, insulation in there, and it's it's got a little uh, strap. Uh, for uh, hammock use. You can hang it up so it doesn't slide down in your hammock. But uh, yeah, otherwise I really don't bring a pillow. I just use my clothes. I think that's the easiest thing to do and um, it's by far the cheapest. Now moving on to cook kit. Um, I, I generally use a jet boil. That's my thing right now. Uh, that's been for a little while but uh, hasn't been always. Um, I did used to use this little BRS stove. Comes in this little bag. And it is tiny, weighs 0.6 ounces. It's an it's an awesome ultralight option. Um, basically, this is it in a nutshell. It is tiny, and uh, this just unfolds. A little handle folds down. These click into place, and there's your stove. That for the price is super cheap. 15 bucks on Amazon and sometimes you can even find them for less but as far as I'm concerned fifteen dollars you can't beat that for such a light stove and it works really really well next off I'm um, just like I went over before this GSI uh, Halulite Minimalist I just think you can't beat it um, you got the you got the cozy with it and uh, you, know, you got the lid with the strainer and you can use it as a cup to drink with because it's got the little drinking hole there uh, just a great thing. It also comes with the little pot grabber. The other cool thing, fuel canister. Fits right inside and then you just throw that stove right on top of there. Easy setup. The other thing I got for you is the jet boil. This is the jet boil flash and I also got this at an REI garage sale. Uh, it retails for a hundred bucks. I bought it for fifty. Um, I used this all the way up until I got uh, my new micro mo, which uh, is in the last review I did. So uh, check that out if you're interested in anything like that. But if you're watching for budget items, you're probably not. <laughs> so my last option for a budget cook system has to do with um, alcohol stoves. Uh, I have a number of alcohol stoves. I'm gonna go with this one. This is by far the simplest thing to use. 
this is uh, nothing but a fancy feast cat stove and basically you just take a hole puncher which you can buy for a dollar at the dollar store and you can buy one of these for about 35 cents and uh, if you have a cat great if not you know what empty it onto a plate and let the stray cat in the neighborhood eat it and then uh, wash it out and and just clip your little uh, holes with your hole puncher all the way around there and then you just add some el some uh, alcohol in there which uh, if you're not familiar with alcohol stoves it would be denatured alcohol the nice thing about the alcohol stoves too is you don't get that um, signature sound that you get from a canister stove and um, you can carry the fuel in a plastic bottle so you're not carrying a metal fuel canister. Um, it's also easier to take just the right amount of fuel that you need. So along with your cook system you're definitely going to need some utensils to uh, eat with and my preferred utensil is the uh, long handled titanium spoon and um, they're only 10 bucks. Other options would be like the light my fire spork. Um, I'm not real crazy about uh, plastic things on the trail because plastic breaks and uh, uh, trust me I have had uh, a plastic spork break and uh, yeah it's not a good thing so myself I just don't trust the plastic on the trail I would much rather have the titanium. Okay so I'm gonna move on to the water. Um, for filtration um, you can get whatever you want, the drops, uh, the iodine drops, things like that. Those work and they are fairly cheap, but uh, my go-to and will always be for budget, the Sawyer Mini. I just don't think you can go wrong with it. 20 bucks for you know for a bag and, and the, and the uh, filter and you also get the, uh, the back flushing plunger. Um, you, you just can't beat it for 20 bucks. And uh, it, the, the thing will literally, if you take care of it, will last forever. Water bottles. All the through hikers use the smart water bottles. I mean, mainly because the threads up here on the cap, they match the threads on the Sawyer. It's two bucks for a, you know, or you know what? Find one of your friends that's drinking a smart water and when they're done with it, grab the bottle from them and steal it and then just wash it out and there you go, for free. Toilet kit. Do you need a trowel? No. You can just pick up a stick and dig a hole with a stick. Um, but I actually prefer a trowel. Now some people use a, uh, a tent stake, like the snow tent stake. Um, that works great. That's a really nice ultralight way to go. Um, this right here, this is my toilet kit. Toilet paper from home. Uh, a small thing of wet wipes because, hey, I just like having a clean butt on the trail. But then I use this... Uh, Deuce of Spades trowel, the tentlab.com. This is the this is my favorite trowel. This is what I would get. This is awesome right here. It only weighs 0.6 of an ounce. Like not even an ounce. That's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, it's got a little bit, you know, it could be a little sharp around the edges or whatever. But you just take your bandana or a buff or something with you and put it over that and, and you know so you don't dig into your hand. That to me is worth 20 bucks. But hey, if you're on a budget, use a stick. Take the toilet paper from your house. That's all you need. Put it all in a plastic baggie. Stuff you already got laying around. Costs you nothing. Unless you want to buy the, the deuce of spades. 20 bucks. It's worth every penny. All right, for headlamps, I can't say enough about the Fox Ellie. I love this thing. I mean, I cut it on sale for like three bucks or something like it was cheap. It was super cheap. It's USB rechargeable. It's got uh, regular light and it's got the red lights, you know, so you don't lose your night vision. And uh, yeah, great headlamp. Um, I've never had any problem. I, I, I actually, I've never had it die on the trail, so I've never even had to recharge it on the trail. Um, other option, this little Ozark Trail thing that uh, I bought from Walmart. Uh, bought it for the kids a few years ago. Hey, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, it does use the uh, just regular uh, AAA batteries, so it's a little bit heavier. This one's way lighter because it's rechargeable. All right, rain gear. Rain gear on a budget. You know, you can throw a trash bag over the top of you, or you can pick up some frog togs. These things, this is a poncho right here, 10 bucks, right? 
Um, I also have an actual rain suit that came, comes with the jacket and the pants. Um, 20 bucks for that. They are not the most breathable, they're not the most durable, but they will definitely keep you dry. All right, a few final things. Let me go through what I call my essentials bag. This is where I keep my, my rope uh, for my bear hang. I keep a small uh, like sewing kit in there. Soap and toothbrush and toothpaste. More rope, I don't think you can have enough of that. With some little tiny carabiners, zip ties. Earplugs, backup matches, extra lighter, my compass with a mirror. Now you don't have to buy a compass that's like this ridiculously expensive. I wouldn't scrimp too much on the compass because you want it to work, but um, you know, for basic navigation, uh, if you if you got something in the you know fifteen to twenty dollar range, it's probably decent enough to uh, get you back to civilization. And that's really all you want. I also keep some uh, repair stuff here and I'm talking about medical kits. This is my medical kit, it's not much. I got a little bit, a small thing of medical tape, the little tick key, which I probably don't even really need. Um, some bandages, uh, some moleskin for uh, blisters, and uh, you know stuff for uh, indigestion. This is my ibuprofen and stuff. But most of this stuff is really, really simple stuff. For a knife or whatever, I always carry this uh, Leatherman Squirt. It's a great little multi-tool. I always carry my phone as well. To me, that's important because I use it for uh, navigation. I have a GPS app. It's called Topo Maps Plus. I use that. A lot of people use the uh, Gaia app. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, which I have never tried yet, but uh, I was thinking about actually trying it because people rave about it. So let me put together a, um, a quick loadout of stuff that I actually have on hand and uh, we'll, we'll go through it and I'll let you know what I put in there and uh, we'll, we'll give it a measure and see uh, just how light we can get it because <laughs> that's pretty important too. All right, folks, there you have it. All packed up, weighed up at 14 pounds. Basically what that includes is the Osprey Exos 38. I paid $128 for it when I, after I figured it out at 20% uh, off from Moose Jaw. Um, rather than throwing in this big Agnes tent that uh, I know it would be hard for most people to find for $135, I threw in a REI Passage 2, which is a two-person tent. It's kind of heavy. It's uh, almost five pounds, but I got it on sale at REI for $112. That is in here. Um, my homemade quilt that uh, I, uh, I made out of the down quilts from Sam's Club. Uh, I paid $30 for those. Made it myself. Uh, Got uh, the uh, Thermarest Z Light pad, and I will also use that for a sit pad while I'm on the trail. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? I'll make a, I'll make a freaking couch out of that. For my uh, cooking setup, the BRS stove. I could have gone with the uh, Cat Can stove for a lot less weight um, and a lot less money. It's just a lot easier to use a canister stove. It's foolproof, you know, you just turn it on, you light it with a lighter or whatever, and bam, there you go, you're gonna boil water in about, you know, four or five minutes. So, I chose the BRS stove. Um, I paid $12 for that off of Amazon. I know you can get it for 15 right now, but you know what, Wait, look for it on sale. The, uh, the GSI Minimalist Pot, I paid $13 for that uh, from an REI garage sale. And uh, the Tokes Titanium Spoon, which you can get for 10 bucks anytime. Also, uh, for water, Sawyer Mini. Uh, I paid $15 for it on sale at Meyer at the end of the season. I know they're normally just 20 bucks anyways, but uh, uh, Smart Water Bottle. I got that for free. My mother-in-law, she uh, drank the water, I took the bottle, I washed it up, and uh, I've been using it ever since. Frog Togs Poncho. It's right here in the back. Uh, like I said, this is nice and stretchy here. Um, you can fit all kinds of stuff back in there, but I paid $15 for that, um, I think. It might have been 10 but I'm going to go with 15 just since, uh, you know, just for the sake of argument. Uh, the Fox Ellie headlamp. I paid $3 for it on Amazon. Now, I know you can get it uh, for 
13 bucks I think it is if you buy a regular price but you see them all the time for 7.97 or something like that advertised on uh, Facebook uh, bandana that's inside of here uh, two bucks at Walmart use it for a camp towel or whatever you know you can put it over your head whatever you want to use it for a, a small sheet of Tyvek you can use uh, to lay all your gear out on the ground or whatever uh, it just comes in really handy you can get that for free from a construction site I'm sure that they got scraps just laying around you know uh, my, my Leatherman uh, multi-tool 20 bucks on eBay for a compass uh, a Sunto uh, A30L uh, I think it's a great compass 19 bucks uh, on Amazon there are cheaper options. I mean, you can buy a $10 compass. I mean, you can buy a $2 compass, you know, one of those little, you know, uh, uh, little zipper poles that you can get. But it's not going to be accurate. So for 19 bucks, that's going to be an extremely accurate compass. And uh, it, it'll last you a lifetime. For the bear bag, I actually put the tent stuff sack in there. And it, I I use that all the time for a bear bag. I always just bring my tent stuff sack. It's made out of really really uh, lightweight uh, ripstop nylon, and uh, it, it works well. If you don't want to use that, just use a just use a trash bag or something. Which by the way, I do have the uh, the quilt and my extra clothes and everything is in a uh, trash bag inside of here. That way, if it does rain, since I don't have a cover for this. All of my things that are essential that they stay dry are going to stay dry. So my essentials bag, you can put together a pretty decent essentials bag with your um, first aid kit for about 25 bucks. It's not much, you know, I mean, you just need a little bit of cordage, um, a small sewing kit, first aid kit, whatever you're, you feel comfortable with. I mean, I go pretty minimalist, but I still have quite a bit more than some people do. Um, so it's whatever you really feel comfortable with. Um, as far as I'm concerned, most of that you can put together for free from your house or you know what, just go to your parents' house or go to your grandma's house or go whoever's got, you know, band-aids and stuff like that at their house and, and fill a little baggie full of stuff and then run out and don't even tell them. As far as maps go, you know what, for free, I just download them online. Hey, if you're on such a budget you don't even have internet, go to the library. Even use their printer. That's pretty much everything in here. And uh, for a base weight of 14 pounds, I mean, you totally can't beat that. So in the end, I add everything up, I'm at $436. Um, yeah, that's a little bit over the 400 uh, from the post that I was reading online or whatever, but you know what? I also included my essentials bag, and most people don't do that. I allowed myself $25 for my essentials bag. I also included a pretty darn good compass, which uh, most people would not add in, and I think that is actually really important. Uh, the other thing I included is, is the multi-tool. To me, that's a must-have. You have to have something to make your repairs while you're on the trail. Not only can you make your trip miserable by not being able to repair something, but you could cut your trip short. And who wants to do that? I mean, the whole reason you're out there is to enjoy yourself and have fun. Other than that, there is no doubt that you can find um, maybe these packs used for less money, maybe a, a tent that's used for less money. Don't be afraid to buy used. And the thing is, is you might be looking at this, and you, you might be saying, yeah, you know what, how am I going to find this at that price? You know, you went to that garage sale, you were lucky to find that at the garage sale. Well, you know what, I, that probably was pretty lucky for me to find certain things at the garage sale, but that's the point. I'm looking, and I'm doing the work. You have to do your homework if you're going to be backpacking on a budget. And to buy things for a lot less money than what they're actually worth, you really have to do the work so if you're willing to put in the work you can definitely get it done and and that goes from the DIY stuff like the quilt all the way up to going to garage sales and sitting out there you know at five o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock when the garage sale opens so you can be one of the first ones in there uh, that stuff that that's how you get the good deals so that's it folks if you got any questions or you think I missed something you got any comments uh, you know holler at me down below and I'll try and answer anything that I can uh, other than that thanks for uh, hanging out with me and I uh, hope you enjoyed this we'll see you next time man this video stuff is hard work I'm 
zombie. What about you? Huh? Yeah. I think it was hard work for you too, wasn't it? Whatever. <laughs> I was dumb. Because <laughs> there's quite a bit of kind of. Jeez. Oh, uh, okay. Really, you could get hit by lightning like four times before that would happen. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I was making that up. Who knows? I could be, and you would just believe it. You know, just something you could put your butt on, you know? I mean, unless you got a big butt and you need a big pad, but hey. See ya.